Welcome to Big Bets on Campus, presented by BetMGM. This is your NCAA Women's Final Four betting preview. My name is Maria Marino. Excited to be alongside Action Network contributors Dan Omataya and Jim Turvey. And fellas, we got an incredible Elite Eight. Now we have an incredible Final Four to look forward to. So let's jump right into previewing both semifinals, which are Friday, April 6th in Cleveland. Game one at seven Eastern, we got the three seed NC state against the top overall seed, South Carolina, South Carolina favored by 11 and a half. Dano, I'm going to start with you. What is your lean on this game? I mean, final four <laughs> double digits. I know it's South Carolina and they can turn it on at any point, but uh, with as hot as NC state is playing, um, and as critical as guard play has been throughout this tournament, I I think what you're getting with South Carolina is amazing. I mean, uh, with NC State's amazing. And uh, revenge game for Sonia Rivers. I don't think she left on bad terms, but uh, still. Uh, so I think it's just too many points for the pressure of a Final Four game. A lot of young players in South Carolina. I think you got to take the got to take the points with NC State. Jim, how do you feel about this? Yeah, so I, I, you know, it, I am nervous. I'm nervous to take either <laughs> side of a spread here because I think I think it's a decent line. Um, if you look at the two teams, I mean, South Carolina is clearly the much better team, right? But mm -hmm. we've seen time and time again, NC State right now is like that perfect team that makes a run that we see every March. And like, let's let's walk through their ways, right? They have a, a guard that is just absolutely red hot. So Zaya James right now shooting 57% from three this tournament, 85% from the line. She's also taking more threes and getting to the line more in general. So she's she's playing out of her mind. Uh, it doesn't stop with her, though. The team as a whole, they're up to 37% from three, and they're getting the line uh, an extra few times a game as well, four extra times a game during this tournament. Uh, for, the, for the tournament as a whole, they have made 29 threes to 14 for their opposition. They've taken 69 free throws. They made 69 free throws compared to 34 for their opponent. So everything is screaming regression, right? But we've seen these teams, especially with the hot guards, go on these runs that seem unsustainable, and then they just keep winning because there's something about March with the hot guard. It's a tiny sample. It's six games, right? It feels like it's forever because it's stretched out over a month, but it's really a small snippet of a season where you can ride a really hot hand. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm looking towards the total. I'm going to go under um, mm -hmm. for a couple of different reasons. For one, it gives me some of that fade of NC State's offense that to me is just kind of screaming for regression. But I also th I also think NC State the, the way they match up match up best with South Carolina is that they're a pretty good defensive rebounding team. Um, you know they're known for their guards, but they have the twelfth best defensive rebound rate in the country by her hoop stats. So this is a team that you know South Carolina relies so much on those second chance points. They're still going to get them. That you're not going to st stop Carmelo Cardosa on the boards. You're not really going to you know take that out of their game entirely. But if you can even slow them down a little bit, which I think NC State's going to be able to do. I think that there's really a chance for this game to kind of bog down. You're in a tight, big pressure situation in general. Um, and I have this number a little bit lower anyway. So all of it to me is pointing towards, let's take the under. The points are scary either way. Uh, South Carolina is terrifying to bet against. But at the same time, this NC State team right now is terrifying to bet against. So I'm, I'm going to look towards the under um, instead of a specific side uh, on, on this game in particular. Okay, so we have an under. And by the way, the total about... 139 and a half or so on bet MGM at the time of this recording. And just a little heads up, by the way, the second game, we have UConn and Iowa. We're going to get to that momentarily, but want to keep breaking down this first semifinal game. Uh, firstly, Dano, any thoughts on the total? Yeah. I mean, I think I, I am in sort of agreement. It's just final fours last few years have just been kind of phenomenal games. Uh, and then you look at what happens at the end of these last two elite eight games, for example, just a, a billion free throws and <laughs> you're not going to have UConn missing six in a row. Uh, that was nuts, but I don't know about still... that. <laughs> it might happen again, but continue. <laughs> uh, I do do like the way NC state has been guarding the three. Obviously it's very easy against a team like Texas, but uh, I mean, they shut down Tennessee extremely well. Uh, Stanford, uh, in the second half too, uh, really 
really funneling their guards towards the sidelines. That's important. I think they're both uh, top 25 in the country in three-point uh, percentage defense. So all signs do point to an under. Uh, that scares me a little bit just with how good South Carolina's defense can be. And, I mean, just it's always scary with that that South Carolina is capable of doing what they did to UNC and mm. and scoring, you know, eight threes in a in a quarter. So uh, second best three point shooting team in the country, which is weird for a Don Staley program. But uh, yeah, I mean, if I I'd probably staying away from the total just because okay. it's March and it's final four. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm still uh, heavy on Westmore and, and the pack. So, okay, here's what I'm hearing. Uh, Dano is a bit hesitant to bet the total, while Jim is a bit hesitant to bet <laughs> the points. Here's where I stand. I'm with Dano. I like <laughs> NC State plus 11 and a half. I agree that this number is just a little too high. I think what we saw in the previous two rounds is that South Carolina is beatable. Like there were some weaknesses I think that were exposed and some game plans that were spot on, but just not executed. So obviously the execution is a different ball game, but in the previous round, Oregon state was within four points with under four minutes to go. And then, you know, South Carolina made more plays, obviously got to the free throw line and made their free throws in the round before that, I mean, South Carolina and Indiana in a two-point game with a minute left, and the Hoosiers lost by four. And I would not have expected that. I, I think Indiana is a great team, but I just did not see that coming. Meanwhile, you have the coaching of Westmore, which you brought up, Dano, on uh, a good amount of rest and a good amount of time to game plan. Um it's going to be a tall task, but I just could see this being closer than than what this spread is suggesting. What's scary about South Carolina is, I like, I mean, Malaysia Full Wiley coming off the bench, like she's arguably their best player. Like they're just so deep. Uh, but as you guys both pointed out, the guard play of NC State has been phenomenal. They've held their own in the paint. It's going to be tough against Cardoso. I mean, Camilla Cardoso, 6'7", she's just a complete cheat code. Uh, but I think if NC State is disciplined, they can they can stay with South Carolina. So I, that's where I, I stand. Can I hop in really yeah. quick, Mary? Because yes. I, I think you made a couple of really good points that I wanted to, to follow up on. So for one, I agree that South Carolina, it almost looks like they haven't even put the foot all the way down on the gas. And I, I think they're almost fine with it. Like, I, I don't want to, I, this take is not being thrown out as like an old man observation, more of like a, Hey, you still won. They're doing the Macarena in like the third quarter of the, the like yeah. their sweet 16 game. They, bored. They, <laughs> they're bored. And, and like 11 and a half points is enough that you can comfortably win and not cover. So I, I think there's a lot to that there. Um, and yeah. to your point on Phil Wiley. Yeah. I actually had a couple of player props I wanted to, to touch on briefly here. And for Wiley was one, I was hoping we were going to get her prop. It's not, it's not up yet. She is by, like you said, she might be their best player. She yeah. is their best player by on off net rating this season. And it, it, it's tough because pow pow and Johnson it's they're two of probably the best 10 guards in the country as well. So she really only comes on when one of those two is out you know, either foul trouble or just getting a little bit of rest. Cause you can't really run all three of them together. That would make them pretty small, but I, there's something about for I, I was talking to uh, our, our friend, Calvin Wetzel over her hoop stats as well before the tournament saying, I want a full Wiley most outstanding player prop before the tournament. Now she, I'm actually surprised her minutes have gone down during the tournament, but I, it, it feels like she's going to have a moment. She, you know, she, every time, that like the scene, the, the stage is the biggest. She's like, she is not scared of it whatsoever. Now, mm -hmm. Dawn does, she loves her vets. She trusts her vets, but I, I'd, I'd love to somehow get some bet on for Wiley to do something crazy during this game. Cause she's just too fun to, to not pop up at some point in this game. The one other thing I'll say is I think that NC state against Texas, even though they were able to pull it out and win what relatively comfortably, um, they made some mistakes that aren't going to fly against South Carolina. Like they're going to have to be sharper. Like their margin of error is a lot slimmer. And in, this goes for in general, any team going up against South Carolina, you really have to 
play very clean basketball and um, pretty flawlessly. They haven't done a bad job with turnovers and they've done a good job on capitalizing on the ones that they force. And I'm counting on a heavy dose of that uh, against South Carolina. Okay. Do we have anything else we want to say about this matchup at the moment? Because we're going to move on and I, talk about the second semifinal. And we're also going to talk about some futures. So we're still going to touch on these teams a little bit more um, in just a few minutes. I wanted to slip in one more thing for this game. Sorry. And I, I, I'm holding ahead, this up here. Please, but by all means, uh, that's why so I, I mentioned Phil Miley is one I was looking at. But there are a couple out there. There are player props, which is awesome. It's it's hard to get player props for for women's college basketball during the regular season. And they, they have them out, you know, days in advance here. So two that I'm looking at, um, Raven Johnson under five and a half assists. So she has hit this number. She hit six each of the last two games. And I know there is some weight to be given to tournament games, but for the season as a whole, she has gone under this the vast majority of the time, 24 of uh, the 35 games. And it's even 12 of the last 15. It's really just these last two games that have bumped up. Now you can say, you know, tournament, bigger competition, but within conference play, she wasn't clearing this number consistently either. So I think the last two games kind of bought us either, you know, an extra assist or maybe some juice on a, a 4.5. Uh, so I like the the under five and a half there. It's it's not juiced right now, but I would take it to, you know, like minus one, 135 or 40 or so right there. And just kind of tying to the, the overall theme of uh, a, a tighter game and under, uh, and, and, you know, maybe dipping my toe in a little bit of the regression here, um, trying to catch the falling knife as, uh, Raheem Palmer likes to say, uh, Isaiah James under, uh, under 19 and a half points. Um, she's been no! amazing she's clearing at this tournament, no! but I, she's not a 57% shooter from three. I mean, it, she might be in this game and you might, you might miss it, but I, 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 you know, the part of me that, that like loves numbers is like, it can't stay forever. So <laughs> yeah. I, I want it to not happen. But maybe yeah. it can be like an emotional hedge too of like, you know, maybe she has a cold, a cold game. Yeah. Um, even if she has a decent game, she can, you know, get to, you know, 18, 19 points and, and still be under. So I'm I'm Fair. looking at that one. I like the Raven one more though of the two. Yeah. I mean, she probably just needs a, a further three point line because uh, she was five <laughs> for five in Portland <laughs> in the first the half. Line. Yeah, exactly. Um, I just have to say, can I just like give Isaiah James her flowers for a second? Yeah. Like I've been following her even in the ACC tournament played well and, and throughout this tournament. And I was just thinking the, that last game and how she came out and just absolutely dominated. She quieted a little in the second half, but still made big shots when it mattered against Texas. And my goodness, she has been phenomenal. So I, I am, while I totally get your prop, Jim, I'm rooting <laughs> for Isaiah, uh, but fair. like you said, she could still have a great game and fall just under that mark. I, I do Dan, want to say anything else. Would, we good? Yeah. I would, I would also just with, some props Don is is a coach that will absolutely tweak her lineup her starting lineup for for each matchup like we've seen I mean granted Cardoso was was uh suspended the first game but even like the last two games Sweet 16 Elite Eight different starting lineups whether it be Chloe Kitts or Ashlyn Watkins so uh pretty important to look at that I mean uh Chloe Kitts came in, played really well against Indiana in the first half, and then did just court again. Um, but she wasn't a starter. Ashley Watkins played the majority of that game. Uh, Chloe Kitts was pretty huge, getting stops down the stretch for Oregon State. So uh, I know lineups aren't released until like right before, but still, uh, Dawn is Dawn is coaching her tail off, except for when her team gets super bored against Indiana. That was <laughs> nuts. But uh, but yeah, I mean. Like betting against Iowa, betting against South Carolina. I mean, both those teams the last two years, just super scary. Very scary. All right, let's keep the scary hours going and get <laughs> into the second semifinal at 9 o'clock Eastern on Friday in Cleveland. So we got the three-seed UConn against another one-seed in Iowa. Iowa laying two and a half. Dano, I guess I'll just keep the the trend going and go to you first on this. Do you lean any way on the spread? Uh, I think I think it's hard to bet <laughs> against Kaylin at the Final Four, especially when she hasn't beaten UConn yet. Um, I think it's I think it's pretty great Ooh, that she hasn't. I think they lost to UConn the Sweet Sixteen her freshman year. Correct. And then last year in the regular season, uh, loss as well. She shot under 40% both those games. Didn't really play well. Um, but 
seen I've seen Caitlin and that team do some amazing things in in person in March and in April. Uh, and I think we're probably overlooking what happened last night. I know Paige was absolutely phenomenal, but I don't think we're getting that those type of minutes from Ice Brady. Um, she was absolutely perfect in everything she needed to do last night uh, against USC. And granted, I don't think USC played their best game by any means. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, UConn's game plan and, and the defenders on that team had a lot to do with it. But uh, still, um, you got positive minutes from Caden Samuels as well. But that is a team that I've said is six deep all year. And I guess six and a half when you you count, you know, ice and cadence. So I can't not lean Iowa here. Um, I I was, I feel more worried about uh, LSU for UConn just with the size, but I feel like UConn fans have to feel good just based on what they saw uh, them do to USC. Uh, Lee Edwards looks so good right now. Um, Nika Mule's defense was just a master class last night on Juju. Um, and it cannot be any worse than Haley Van Lith. It is, <laughs> it is a absolute incredible matchup. Uh, but you know, like against USC, I just worry about the foul trouble. Um, yep. and the, and the depth. So, I mean, I think the safe play, uh, is, is Iowa. I have a lot of thoughts, uh, but Jim, I do want to see if you have uh, a pick on this side here. If not, I will certainly fill the void. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have a pick, but I still want to hear the thoughts, but I, I am also on Iowa. Uh, okay. But first, I feel like we need to like touch on, yeah, there were a couple of like minor coaching malpractices, it felt like last night between, <laughs> between uh, you know, I think we all think that what whatever was going on with Haley Van Lith there was a little bit strange. Like, why was she potentially sick being run out to guard Caitlin one on one and go under screens and not even have a hard hedge to yeah. help her? It it really didn't make a whole lot of sense what was going on there. But then even in the other game, I mean, USC not attacking. Uh, you know, when Mule and KK Arnold both had four fouls, you got to. Ju- this is a UConn team. Dano mentioned that. It goes six, maybe six and a half. We're we're pushing it there. You know, how are you not attacking constantly? The four and Aaliyah ended with with four fouls. Yeah. There were long stretches where they really, you know, needed to just have the 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 point of attack be whoever is guarding with four fouls and just go right after them. I I don't think Caitlin and and Lisa are going to show that same kind of grace if they get in if they can mm-hmm. get UConn into foul trouble. Um, I do think it's. I mean, this is going to be an awesome matchup. But both yeah. of these games are going to be great. But this is you know this is the the kind of the gemstone that that we're all going to be you know really really tuned into. Um, I really you know when when Molly Davis went out, it, it, she's such a key part and and like of the team as a whole, she's been there since day one, but. Sydney Falter is really good. And I have been yeah. pushing for more minutes for her forever because I think what she brings to team, you know, Kate Martin is, is a great second player, but there's something about a falter, the, the, the pressure she puts on the rim um, is the attitude. Maybe uh, there is something about the attitude, the dog. She is an absolute dog. She had the Chicago dog in her and she, she, the watching her on the court, it always is like, it, it just kind of feels like they have a, an extra little edge. And so, you know, it's, it's really, you know, it's terrible that Molly is out. She's one of their, you know, best all around players, really good player, but the gap that has opened for a falter to hop into this rotation and get really good minutes. I mean, she's showing out in the tournament and really showing what she's capable of. I think it kind of underrates them. If you look at them from like a full season, if you're modeling this out, because I think she does raise their, raise their ceiling in particular. And this is a game in which that ceiling is really going to matter. Um, to me though, it just feels like it, it's going to be, you know, UConn hasn't played a, a game within five points this season. You know, Paige is not going to shrink from the moment, but there's mm-hmm. just things you learn when you play in tight games. We've seen Caitlin at the end of tight games. There's no worries there. We know how that story ends. It ends with her driving left or right, off balance three, going through the net. So I, I think if this is a tight game, it goes to, <laughs> to Iowa. If it's a tight whistle, it goes to Iowa because you know, they don't have incredible depth. But they have they have bodies they can throw out there. UConn, it's it really gets you know the bench gets short really quick. So um, I, I I think that it's hard to go against Iowa here. I this is probably my favorite. I think I like this even more than the under in the other game. 
Um, I I'm, I'm so excited for this game. I didn't, I didn't see any player props that jumped to me, but the, the Iowa side is the one that, that I want to be on for, for this game, for sure. I do want to say like, we saw how tired LSU got like running with, with Iowa. Mm. Uh, it gets even more. I mean, I mean, I, I didn't even want to say LSU played seven deep. They played Rosario for like three minutes. So, uh, you might see some of that, that same type of action. And I mean, granted, you know, you got some young, young studs on this UConn team. I mean, Shade and, and, uh, KK Arnold are super young, so they should be able to go the distance, but we've seen what fast paced teams have done to UConn, uh, Notre Dame, uh, just got Mm -hmm. out and ran. They were down 12 early and, and dismantled UConn, NC state, uh, ran them off the court. Um, and I, and I, I'm to Jim's point with, uh, Sydney, I, I think maybe that also not just raises the offensive bar, but the defensive bar for Iowa. Cause I mean, statistically this defense is so much better than, than last year's Iowa squad. So I know you're all waiting to hear, but it is in fact a sweep. I <laughs> feel like I have to take Iowa minus two and a half here. And that's coming from someone who it's loves hard for you. UConn. It's it's <laughs> it's hard. Uh, for those who don't know, I covered UConn as their team reporter for four seasons, um, and just grew to have so much respect not only for Gino but the whole coaching staff. And Paige Beckers in particular is an A plus human being and clearly a, a phenomenal player. A um, couple things I want to get into. So we get the matchup of the first team All-Americans, which we've touched on, sort of this gemstone of this matchup. And I want to illustrate for those who might not be super familiar with one or the other, like this matchup between Paige and Caitlin and how they differ. In my opinion, here's here's what makes them different. Like Caitlin Clark obviously has the endless range. Whereas Paige is very comfortable in the mid range. Um, and because of that, her efficiency tends to be a little bit better than Caitlin. I, I also think that defensively Paige Beckers is underrated and Caitlin was, has been pretty, pretty good on defense too. Uh, she had a couple of steals and a block in the elite eight Beckers leading her team in steals and blocks and the versatility, like. She's typically a guard. She can play any position on the floor, in my opinion, even the five. I mean, not against bigger players, but she's essentially been positionless throughout this entire tournament. In fact, they're running her out as a four right now um, at six, not even, she's 5'11". Um, and so I'm just so excited to get these two players back together. And in terms of the the defensive strategy, so Jim, um, you touched on the questionable decision of Kim Mulkey to have Van Lith on Clark. And here's what I predict to happen. I predict that Nika Mule will start on Caitlin Clark, but Mule, she is a bulldog for sure. She has a tendency to get in foul trouble. She fouled out um, against Syracuse earlier in the tournament. In my opinion, if, if UConn were deeper, I would have Paige Beckers on Caitlin Clark because she's their best defender. She's their most disciplined defender. And I bet you as the game goes on, kind of like how we saw with uh, Juju Watkins, Paige will start to get Mm -hmm. some defensive action against Caitlin, because I think it's going to be out of necessity when it comes to the fouls. Um, But Paige also has to play 40 minutes. And so because that's a consideration, you know, I don't think you're going to see that match up one-on-one right away, but I do think we're going to get some one-on-one, which I think is freaking awesome for this <laughs> for this matchup um, i wonder if uh caitlin will do caitlin defends like the old guy at the rec uh gym when he's defending me just kind of like does the insulting like wave off <laughs> to be like i'm gonna get in your head and that's how you miss your shot i don't think she'll pull that with Paige though yeah so it, to get to why i feel that iowa uh covering is is the um play here is really what you guys mentioned as far as the depth piece as great as Paige is, you're playing seven players, but you're really playing five. Like you're getting 
Ice Brady off the bench, maybe Caden Samuels off the bench. I was a little surprised to see her, and I thought that was a brilliant move by Gino in the Elite Eight. She don't she don't play a lot, like, but not only not only the depth piece, but the experience. Two of UConn starters are freshmen, and both players that come off the bench are freshmen, and so. It's just this perfect storm. Sadly, while I think UConn is great, Aaliyah Edwards has been phenomenal. She had 24 points in the last round. Uh, Paige Beckers, like I said, the efficiency, 51% from the field in the tournament. Iowa has not only more bodies, but particularly in that big position. If Hannah Sulke gets in foul trouble, Iowa has other very capable bigs, as you saw in the Elite Eight. They're, they're going to be a little bit of a drop-off, but they're serviceable. Whereas if if Aaliyah gets in foul trouble, and she had four in the last game, she fouled out a prior game as well, what are they going to do? Like, that's really what it comes down to. And I and I think um, you guys just nailed it as far as, like, with the bodies, with the foul trouble, Iowa wearing down UConn. And I, you know, like I said, Paige, Paige is phenomenal. She's going to make plays. Um but how sustainable is what they have going on? So that's where I, where I landed. Anyone else want to jump in? <laughs> I think a few other things I like, just like proximity to Iowa too. It's like, it's going to be Iowa oh, city North, interesting. you know, like interesting. that's, yeah. I mean, I mean, it was, it was Iowa city Northeast last night. Jesus Christ. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I don't know if y'all have been, uh, or if y'all have seen Caitlin live. But... I have not yet. Jim has, I believe. Yeah, you yeah. two have, and I haven't. What the hell? Uh, I mean, I I saw her the final four last year. I went to a game against Iowa State and Iowa City, but like the roar after like another made three. Like I mean, it, the roars get continuously louder, but it's it's the most like demoralizing feeling. Ooh. Like UConn fans travel very well, though. Yeah, uh, I don't know if they're going to be paying what these prices are now. (laughs) Um, Yeah, we just saw ticket prices like upwards of 900 bucks to get into the final. Get in the door to get in the door. Which is amazing. And I and honestly, I don't blame people. Look, um, I do want to get some quick futures talk. We might have some props. Do we have any thoughts on the total of this game before we move on? I don't have any thoughts on the total, but I did want to just just hop in real quick. Say, like, can we hat tip to the committee right now? Because like, they set this up, so you know they're and and we can we have talked about how you know Caitlin is the best player in in women's college basketball right now. She does also get exponentially more coverage for sure, but she is the face of the sport right now for for better and worse. And it's all deserved coverage. It, she no is the worse. best player. There's for no sure. for worse. What she's done for this sport, uh, yeah. like it's awesome. Like, for sure. And now she they set this up so she gets to go through the team that beat her in the final last yeah. year. The preeminent, you know, the the the, the college the that everyone program. thinks of, the premier yeah. program, Gino Ariema and Paige Beckers in the final four, and then yeah. a potentially undefeated current dynasty South Carolina. I mean, you couldn't that's this kind of stuff that if she does that, if she pulls it off, they're like chiseling her face into Mount Rushmore as she <laughs> walks off campus. Like <laughs> You couldn't draw up a better mm-hmm. map. Like it, the, such the a hat drama. tip to, to the committee. It's such a good job. And the storyline of every single round. Uh, okay. If and now we, I just guaranteed that we get NC State versus UConn in the championship. <laughs> oh, oh man. Okay. Well, are we good with this matchup in particular? Can we move on a little bit? We good. Yeah. Now? I mean, if you're going to bet, if you're going to bet anything, bet the over, like, you know, like if on a total, like yeah, it's yeah. just, it's it's the final four it's fun um yeah and and yeah uh, page master class incoming too like i won't be surprised if page drops 30 yeah for sure the other um thing that worked for me in the last round like if you like iowa and you want to maybe parlay it with like caitlin clark something or other uh that that i did have success with that in the last round but uh, uh, Jim, I want to go back to what you were saying with these matchups and look ahead to who we think is, you know, advancing. It sounds like we all in our brackets, hypothetically would have <laughs> South Carolina advancing and Iowa advancing, which is perfect, <laughs> um, in a lot of ways. Uh, and so, I am looking at the outright winner odds. Obviously, South Carolina is the favorite, minus 200. 
I think there's some value on Iowa plus 300. And um, I don't mind sprinkling on that because I think the one advantage that Iowa has against South Carolina is once again, the experience factor. Their big three were all there in the final a year ago. Whereas in the semifinal a year ago, you had five starters on South Carolina that all left. <laughs> and so while I think that South Carolina is the deeper team, the more skilled team, the more physical team, Iowa does have that one notch, you know, that, that favors them in terms of experience. And if I think LSU might be the closest comp that we have to South Carolina, like Angel Reese and especially a hobbled Angel Reese is not Camilla Cardoso. I get that but it gives me a little bit of confidence in Iowa that they were able to hang with them uh, just from a physical standpoint. So I don't hate, uh, like I said, a little sprinkle on Iowa. Anyone else? Yeah. I think loved it yesterday. <laughs> what was that? I would have loved it yesterday. <laughs> um, like a plus 700 or whatever it was. Fair. I don't know why I didn't think that far ahead. I thought I had in my bracket, but <laughs> So I think so if we're you're going to do action that, there's, items. there's a couple ways to do it too, though. Cause so I was about minus 135 on the money line here. And I'm curious, you two who are both on NC state in terms of spread, mm -hmm. are you thinking like, does that also mean you're going to sprinkle the money line? Or are you pretty confident that South Carolina is going to win? You just don't think they're going to roll by 12. That's how I feel the, the latter, yeah. the latter of what you said. So then I think if you, if that's how you're feeling, if you're going to get a pretty good number on Iowa, I think you'll get a pretty good number on Iowa straight up in the championship. I think you could get, you know, a plus two, like a, a maybe even, well, I don't know, Dan, what would you make Iowa versus South like Carolina? Money line. Yeah, was... money line. You might just be able to roll it over and double, double the money that way and get a, an implied number higher than plus 300 because some of that plus 300 has the NC State p potential matchup in that number. Yeah, I mean... If, if I'm just thinking about what I think the spread was nine and a half last year for South Carolina in a national championship, it's probably down to like six and a half. So I, I think taking, you know, if you're already liking Iowa here, um, definitely plus 300, if you want to ride the wave I mean, and that'll probably get, I mean, the world loves to bet on Iowa. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. That down yeah, to and I wouldn't be surprised, Dano, if Iowa is overvalued, like if they make it to the championship game, just because of yeah. the bets coming in on Iowa and the hype around Caitlin Clark. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I will say, uh, I do believe that South Carolina gets through NC State, and the huge difference in this year's team is uh, last year's game plan. Uh, won't work against this year's South Carolina team. Yeah, um, correct. Way it's just a, I, I mean, to me, it's crazy, but I think this is like Don Staley's best team uh, that she's had. It's just more By versatile. Uh, defense is still top notch, but they they score in so many different ways. And then, uh, like we've already mentioned, the depth. So, um, I mean, I think the world deserves to see it, though. Like. Uh, oh, we got it. We got, yeah, we got to manifest that. It's got to happen. <laughs> we're manifesting all of it. I mean, every yeah, single Sorry, round. UConn fans. Yeah, yeah. And NC State. But, but also props to UConn. They made a freaking yeah. final four with like yeah. 60 points sitting yeah. on the bench with because of all their injuries. So, like, they've crazy. been great. They've delivered. They've done yes. their job. Uh, it, it's just such a tall task. But yeah, I mean, the fact that we got LSU Iowa, it felt like a championship game really did i mean the energy i wasn't in the building dano you were i was on my couch and i'm like getting chills i'm freaking out i'm getting into like standing up walking around pacing like i mean and it was just ah uh, i was just in my glory and and now we get three more amazing games any final thoughts jim no, I, I, so in the meantime, I kind of looked at what, you know, some of the good, the good models out there might have for the game. I, it actually might be a little bit shorter. I I'm curious to see, see what the number will be. If we do get in Iowa, South Carolina, it could be as short as uh, Iowa plus like three and a half or something. So that, that would be, you know, 
I, I might be intrigued by by South Carolina at that point, but mm-hmm. um, we'll have to see. The other part of it is seeing how these two teams handle their Final Four matchups. Because you don't want to overreact to one game, but these there are these are more you know intense, uh, purposeful games where you do get to see rotations. Like, is Don Saley going to give me some more full Wiley? You know, is is uh, is is Caitlin? You know, when she has a defender like either Mule or, or Becker's on her. How does she handle that instead of maybe an HBL who wasn't really able to give her the challenge that we'd want to see from her. So you, you'd be able to take some stuff from these games. So that's the other benefit to, to waiting it out if you're looking to play Iowa. Can I just say too, that I think one of the hardest things from a coaching standpoint is the short turnaround between mm. the first yeah. the semifinal and the final. So I know that, you know, both of these, all of these coaching staffs probably have specific coaches assigned to each team that they're scouting and doing homework right now for all the potential like options so that when it gets to that point, you know, you're like ready to go. But I, I just, I think that's going to come into play here with like, I could, I, I could see the execution and the game planning being brilliant in the semis and a little more anything goes in the final just because of that turnaround. And let's not forget that for the second year, in a row uh, last year was the first time ever the final will be on ABC. So network TV at three o'clock in the afternoon. And Dano, you and I have talked about this. Caitlin Clark loves prime time. And that I, I despise that quick turnaround for the players, just especially who was playing in the later game on Friday into Sunday. So just something else to take into account. But that being said, um, I'm not going to be complaining because I'll be locked in at any time. <laughs> any of the days. All right. I think uh, that's going to do it for our NCAA women's final four betting preview. We'll have episodes on the men's final four releasing right here in the days ahead, along with a player props episode on the action network podcast. So be sure to check those out as well, guys. It's been a blast for Dano Mattia and Jim Turvey. I'm Maria Marino. Thanks for listening to BBOC presented by BetMGM.